joystick. Correct. Yeah. Joystick. Uh, this is fly by wire. Uh, you don't have a, you don't have cables. Uh, it's basically the connection uh, to the, to the. Nima. To the Nima. Yeah. And uh, and uh, you don't have any cable because uh, uh, the computer of that system is connected to the backbone and now that system is connected with the computer and the computer sends the signal to the sensors and the sensors move the steering, the sensors activate the throttle, the sensors, yeah? The sensor, no cables. It with sensors. This is the, this is the system fly-by-wire. And this is the connection. It's basically that, that thing. Incredible, no? You eliminate, you eliminate the cable, the mechanical control. You don't have mechanical control. That's, is that the old NEMA, the 1806 or uh, this is uh, No, this is 2000. Uh -huh. mm. This is 2000. Mm -hmm. the, with NEMA 183, you don't have that system. Uh, you remember why not? What is the main the difference between one NEMA, NEMA 183 and NEMA 2000? Guys? Is it the voltage? Remember the that? The NEMA 183, oh, it's, it's not one, only direction. one direction. Yeah, that's it. Unidirectional. Yeah. And the, the other one is uh, bidirectional. No? Yeah, that's it. That's the inconvenience. For that reason, to integrate elements NEMA 183 with NEMA 2000, you need the adapter. What is the name of the adapter? The gateway. The gateway. The gateway. Yeah? And uh, when, when you use the gateway, you lose a lot of properties. That's that's not good. The majority of the new boats are fly-by-wire, no cables, no cables. Oh. In a small boat, yes, you have cables, you have uh, controls with cables. Uh, yes, in, in, in mega, 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 mega boats like those, hydraulics is, is, uh, is the system predominant for boat thruster, for uh, actuators. How many doors, cranes, yeah. windows? Are operated. Yeah, yeah, hydraulics. And uh, I hope that in the future uh, you work more and more with the with hydraulics. Uh, remember that the hydraulics is a it's a combination of electrical, electronic, with the hydraulic, with the mechanical system. Uh, because uh, you need the solenoid. Uh, you need the solenoid for what? In hydraulic system. Remember me, refresh me. Well, to control the flow. To move the right. body of yeah. valves and, and, and move the, the, the fluid in one direction or the other direction. This is possible only when you move it, uh, the body of valves. You remember that you have two options, with the handle or with the solenoid, depending on the position, because you press this button or this button, the, the body of valves allow the flow in this direction or this direction. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, the signal on the solenoid is is uh, AC or DC? DC. DC. Normally it's DC, but uh, can I can I install a, a momentary switches AC? Yes. 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 <coughs> no problem. No problem. In in mega jets is AC. Everything is AC. No DC. Can I can I combine, uh, for example, um, a, a, a big DC motor, reversible motor, like uh, the motor of the bow thruster, DC motor, reversible, and uh, the signal for the solenoid AC? Yes. 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 But that would make it more complicated, would it not? Yeah, yeah. But uh, in some boats there are complications, especially <laughs> in Italian boats. <laughs> you don't have to say that twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yes, you can. M my friend, remember that uh, in two months, Dr. Fermin, in two months, you are on the street, ready to work like a doctor. Are you ready to be a doctor? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I still have a long way. Okay. At the beginning, it's a little intimidating yeah. when you <laughs> enter in a boat, oh, and oh. yes, and you say, I solved that problem. Calm, calm. You have to acknowledge, my friend. The only that you need is think. Probably you need to make a couple of phone calls to your friends, to me, to Danny. But uh, you solve it, you solve it. Only imagine this. You enter in a mega yacht, ultra mega yacht, in the engine room. You say, wow, this is the engine room, wow. 
this is a, like a hospital, no? It's mm -hmm. too clean, it's organized, it's perfect. But that engine room was designed for other couple of guys like you. Exactly the same. And if you check the systems, all the systems, you know all the systems. Mm -hmm. You will give it a little, a little time to follow the, oh, oh, yeah, this is the control, yeah, yeah, no. And this is the control, and this is the unit. Yeah, yeah, I understand. You need a little time. This is the time that you need to take all, all the time when you receive a, a, an, an order, take your time. Analyze the system, understand the system, ask to the manager. And after that, start to remove to this assembly. Yes or no? Mm -hmm. That's the secret. In, in, in director, the yeah. people make a lot of mistakes, no? Well, because if you make a mistake, it costs a lot of time and money. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Correct. Ask to the manager. Ask to your supervisor. Hey, hey my friend, I am going to do this and it's okay? Yes, it's okay. Or no, 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 no. Don't remove that. Only, only check. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, thank you. Ask to him. Ask to him. Normally, in general, the supervisors are good, good people. People with a good knowledge. Don't forget. Don't forget. This is my recommendation. If you want to go with your supervisor for because you have a question, because you have a problem, always, always go with them with minimum two solutions. Mm -hmm. Minimum two solutions. Okay, I have this problem. I have two recommendations. And the, and the manager said, mm -hmm. okay, the second one is good, but added this and this. But always, always go with two recommendations. I found that this broken, but I have two options. What do you prefer, boss? No, I prefer the second one, but be careful with this and this. Okay, thank you. And the, and the, 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 the manager understand that you are intelligent, that you are organized, that you, you, you know. Mm -hmm. You ask because you want the approval. No? Anybody follow me? Yes. All right, this is my recommendation, my friend. You have the knowledge, you have the books, you have the information, um, and uh, always, always, always follow the, the manufacturer recommendations, always. Try to avoid war with Hialeah people. The Hialeah people destroyed your reputation. Yeah. Who connect that cable? No, my helper. No, oh, my friend, those terminals are, no. Finally, it's your reputation, because that guy is your helper. If, if the job is Mickey Mouse, this is your job, not the job of him, all right? If you are working in a marina and they, no, you, help to him. No, no, my friend, I prefer by myself. <laughs> With that guy, I make a lot of mistakes, all right? If you are working by yourself, try to hire people with the uh, knowledge. No helper, generic help. No, he's a good guy. He work in a, in a, in residential electricity. No, 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 no matter. No, because at the end of the day, I have three problems. Okay, especially in electrical installation, in electronic installation. The people think that the, the electricity in both is the same like uh, the residential. Uh, it's different. It's different. It's, completely it's different. Completely. It's completely different. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Any other question about this point? In two months, you are outside. Right now, you are outside. You are ready to start. Don't worry. Don't be intimidated. No, my friend. You can solve it. You need to analyze. Analyze. Remember, each, each problem has one million of solutions. No, it's overheating. <laughs> overheating is, is not easy. Normally, the, the Mickey Mouse technician, oh, is this the, the raw water pump replaced? No, 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 no. Let me check. You replace the robot? Yes, three times. Oh, this is not the, the solution. The solution is, is, oh, I changed the head gasket three times. No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not the solution. You have another problem. Let me I analyze. Let me I analyze. Let me check the oil. Let me check. Yeah, you, you know. You know all the, all the parameters that you need to verify. Okay, my friend. And, uh, and you have my phone number, the phone number of Danny. We are, you. I am your friend, okay? You need my help? I am friend, always. I have a question. The captain I'm working for now, he said that his uh, anchor goes down but doesn't go up. That couldn't, uh, cylinder control box, is it close to the windlass? Normally is. look, this is the windlass. This is the deck, the pulpit. The windlass is here and under, 
is the, the control box over there. It's All located right. here. And this is the problem. It's located over there and the water splash. When the chain enter, splash water. Oh, okay. And, uh, and corrode. But he also, on the helm, he changed the steering wheel. Uh-huh. And he had to take off the hydraulic line, so he didn't bleed it yet. But, but, uh, but uh, this is in the fence. Oh, it's in the pen? This pen? is in the pen. Oh, okay. Wait a second. There's this no is in the pen. Look at the, at the question. The, the customer complained that the problem with the anchor goes down but not up. Uh, additionally, in the helm, he replaced the helm, the helm pump and um, produced leaks. And he thinks that probably that, that, that operation affects the anchor. No. No, because the anchor, the only element that you have in the console for the anchor system is the, the switch. Push. Yeah. The switch up and down. That switch. Uh -huh. All, only that switch. This one. That switch. You have a switch exactly like this mm -hmm. for the anchor. Up and down. Up and down. Momentary. Momentary in both. Yeah? That's the switch. And that switch, this cable and this cable, where is connected with the anchor. And the positive and the negative. Where is connected that switch? That switch, that switch, that switch. Goes to the control box. The control box, right? Uh, correct. With the control box or with a couple of relays. You remember? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I had that problem and all it was was one of the, it would go down and not up. One of the wires was just corroded through. Correct. Oh. And that's all it was. No, so, so can I get like a battery cable and just jump Yeah, let me I bring the, again the, the board and I... I just saw this new acrylic dash for this guy. It's so nice. <laughs> hey, um, is your anchor horizontal or vertical? I haven't checked it out. Well, I'm pretty sure I have it's a big ass winch that's on top. Sure yeah. Okay. Yeah, because it doesn't have that uh, gypsy. Yeah. Okay, so it is vertical. Look, my friend, this is the anchor. And, uh, and uh, here, here in the. How big is that boat? 65. Oh, it's probably horizontal then. The big ones to have it, like the 10 in the engines on top of the motor. I'm not vertical. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's in, the, in the console, space. you only have that switch. Up or down? Yes or no? Yes. Mm -hmm. This and this, where are located? Those elements. In the, in the box, in the in the over there, no? Normally this one is on top, excuse me, the motor is in the bottom, on top is the... The chains. Ah, the chain, yeah. Capstick. Gypsy. This is on top of the deck. Right. This element is under. Yeah? Yep. This is on top, this is under. That's the gypsy and the dog lock. Correct. And, uh, and, and this is under. Right. Yeah? Pam, pam. This is on top. This is the situation. Okay, I have problem. It's going down but not up. What is the first step? It's going down but not up. Check. Find the simplest thing that you can work on. Which is okay, verify, verify if the motor is moving in both directions. How can you check that? Uh, making it straight. Jump it. Bring the positive. Uh, you can jump it. You can jump it from the positive. Or, or directly from the positive to the battery here and here. Yep. And you check, nah, nah. okay, my motor is okay. Now I am going to verify if this element is working. How do you check if this element is working? Exactly the same. You bring power, you bring power fr from this point. This point is the battery, no? The middle one. And now, 
Ah, okay, my control box is okay. I bring power directly here with the cable from the positive and directly here and rotate in both directions. The control box is good? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, okay, if the control box is good, the motor is good, what is the problem? Switch. In the harness, this or is the console. Switch. In the harness or in the switch. Mm. How I check the harness? Pip, 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 pip. And the switch. Ah, it's the harness. Like, you found it. One cable is corroded. You replace the yellow cable, and finito. No? Difficult? Always, always. In the console, I only have this. I only have a switch. Suppose, suppose that uh, my, my anchor is hydraulic. That's what I was saying. Okay. My anchor is hydraulic. How is the motor of uh, the, the hydraulic anchor? How is the motor? The motor is, is, is like this? No. No, it's a hydraulic motor. That hydraulic motor have two lines coming from the central hydraulic unit with two solenoids and the body of valves. The central hydraulic unit, this is a great question. Let me explain something about that. Unfortunately, somebody stole my central hydraulic unit from here. Look at this. In a typical central hydraulic unit, you have the motor, you have the reservoir. Anybody follow me? Mm -hmm. And you have a different, different, What is this? The body valves. The body of valves with three positions. You remember? Mm -hmm. And you have another one here. And you have another one here. And you have another one here. You have a four or five solenoid control valves. Everybody follow me? Right. Pam, 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 pam. This one, this one, is going up for uh, for anchor. You know the control box for anchors. Oh, that control and that control. That's the central control unit. That's the central hydraulic unit. Oh, central hydraulic. Okay. One one solenoid valve for anchor, other solenoid valve for uh, uh, the passarella uh, uh, extended and retract, yeah, pam, pam, other switch to activate those. That one for other element, that one for other element. You understand? Right. This is the central hydraulic unit. Ah, okay. My anchor in, is hydraulic. The motor of the anchor is hydraulic. Ah, but in the console, I have two buttons. One push button for down and other push button for up. Those are the push buttons, and those push buttons go to the solenoid in each side. Everybody follow me? Mm -hmm. Oh, my ank, pay attention. The anchor hydraulic is going down only. It's going down only, no up. What is the next step? How you, how you do the troubleshooting? It's hydraulic, the motor over there, but, and the, the, the captain say that only go down, no up check uh, the solenoids okay here you go over there you remove the solenoid you remember I explained in the in the in the diesel transmission you remove the solenoid and you bring power positive and negative directly to the 85 and 86 <laughs> down okay yeah <laughs> up okay everybody follow me mm -hmm. yeah. you want that I show again where you bring the power positive and negative on the solenoid okay. it's in 85 and 86 yeah. pam 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 and you hear that the anchor, dan, dan, okay. The hydraulic motor of the anchor is good? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's good. The anchor is going up and down. I bring the signal here directly positive and negative with a couple of alligator cables and goes up and down. What is the problem? The wire. In the harness or in the push bottom? Okay, let me check in the console. I remove here. Let me check when I press, ah, okay, it's operating. That one? Nothing. How is the connection here in those buttons? 
Let me explain how is the connection. Those buttons, those push buttons, those push buttons, they have two terminals. You see? Mm -hmm. Two terminals. Yep. You have two of them. One for up and other for down. Together. Pretty close. This for up and this for down. You follow me? Yes. Okay. Look at this. I do the picture. You have two of them. Right. You have two of them. <laughs> and you have the other one here. What type of switch is that switch? It's open. Normally. Excuse me? Normally, Normally open. open. Normally open momentary. No? Okay. I am going to connect the middle of this with the middle of this directly to battery. The battery or the positive boost bar. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. With a fuse. In some cases, it's the, the problem is that fuse, hmm. right. normally. Okay, and what happened here and here? Here, here is, and the other one, here. They have other cable for ground and other cable for ground. That's clear? Mm -hmm. Finito? Ah, this one is working, but this one no. Oh, let me check. I disconnect the power, and I check continuity when I press. Nothing. This one, beep. This one, nothing. What happened? That's broken. That switch is out. You replace the switch. Normally on a hydraulic system, it is an electrical thing, right? Because those hydraulic pumps, they're really resilient because it's just a vein pump. Yeah, because it's a combination. The system is hydraulic, yeah. but the signal to activate the solenoid are electrical. electrical. And that's going to break probably much sooner than the yeah. hydraulic. In the console, you don't have hydraulic lines. Yeah, yeah. You have electric buttons to activate those solenoids. Is clear that 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 is, that uh, situation, my friend? Yes or not? Yeah. yeah. Is that just one question? The wire that you drew there that goes to the positive bus bar? Oh yeah. Is that always don't... purple or it's red? Ah, or no, no. So it's because it's I red. don't have red. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, because you had a question on the test. And <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, yeah. That one should be, or purple, if you wanted that, that element be activated only when the motors are running. Yeah. That, that depends on you, your design. Okay? This is the positive, because in the switch, you interrupt the positive. You don't have negatives, no? Mm -hmm. Clear, my friends? Yes, sir. Yeah, um... but, excuse me. No, Mr. Lopez, the anchor is electrical. I remember one guy. Why you say that the anchor is electrical? Because the switches here in the consoles are with two cables, electric cables. Yes, my friend, this is the signal for the solenoids. Go into the pulpit, into the... <laughs> put the camera. This is a hydraulic motor, guy. Look at the lines, oil lines. Entering in, you remember that, uh, the hydraulic uh, motor? Yeah. And, and the hydraulic lines are coming from uh, the servo valve, you remember? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. In some cases, in some cases, no. In the majority of, uh, of those elements, they have here one handle. Here in the second one, other handle. Here in the third one, other handle. Yeah? Handle, handle. Just a manual. You can go to the engine room and you activate manually. And the anchor goes up and down. Okay, the hydraulic motor is good. The anchor is good. The problem is here, the solenoid don't receive the signal. Finito. All the boats, they have the option manually and the solenoids. Yes or not, doctor? Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a couple things I need to know. So that's basically the hydraulic central unit right there. That cylinder is the motor. The box right there is the reservoir and those other boxes. Look right at there. this. This uh, is the motor. Yep. That motor, that motor could be AC or DC uh -huh. re reversible, no? Yep. Okay. This is? The reservoir. The reservoir. And this is? Uh, the body, the yes. servo valve. The servo valves, the body of valves or servo valves. All right, and another thing, um, that's basically just a simple concept, right? Because if you have other units out there that relies on hydraulic power, you wouldn't really have a body of valves right there, right? It would be yeah. more junctioned. You have one body of valves per each system. Yeah, but if there's too many hydraulic units out there, would it be something a little more complicated, like a junction or a... No, uh, no, let me no. explain something. Look at this. 
in this situation, I have integrated in this central hydraulic unit how many equipments? Four. Four equipments. <coughs> Can I add it other one here? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But it all depends about the gallon per hour. Depend of the capacity of this and this. So what would happen if you would run out of room to actually add more valves in there? Ah, depend of the capacity. Yeah. Yeah, depend on the capacity. So you may have to increase the reservoir or the pump. But uh, normally you don't have problems because you don't use all, all of them at the same time. Mm. You, I added normally more and more, and I, I, I don't have problems. Right. When the people say, Mr. Lopez, can I add it other passarela? Uh, I add it. Mm, no problem. <laughs> oh, he's there every morning. Professor, I have a question. If the, the body of valves can control forward and reverse of the flow to a particular device, why does the motor have to be reversible? Oh no, excuse me, sorry. In that particular case, that motor is not reversible. Okay. It's, 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 sorry. It's reversible when it's independent, only for one. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, that's correct. It's, it's, it's spinning in one direction. You want a better picture of this? Yes. It's clear? It's clear, okay. Okay. Uh, always, always, the big boats, they have a central hydraulic unit. And they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Un and they have labels. Passarella, uh, David, uh, Crane, uh, ba, 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 and they have the handle for each one. Now, what do you ever find boats, ships, where the, the owners were too cheap to upgrade the central hydraulic unit, let's say, and so they just added more individual units for yeah. the things? Yeah, I do that. This, this is one of my my jobs. Uh, I added more equipment into the central hydraulic unit. But what if, like, I mean, what if they reach the capacity of the hydraulic unit, like? Uh, once again, you remember? What did, the, what did the, the, the procedure to calculate that? And the PSI and the gallons per hour. The, right. Uh, I have, for example, anchor. And then you get it's a, uh, a uh, 70 psi and three gallons, no? Yeah. Uh, I have a passarella. It's a uh, 25 psi and two gallons. I have uh, the David. Uh, it's a uh, 15 psi and two gallons. Uh, what is the other one? I have bow thruster. Uh, other 15 and two gallons. I have a steam thruster other 15 and two gallons yeah you added all of this yeah 450 psi and you added all of this and you have a uh, 12 uh, gallons per hour okay with that with that information you calculate what the pump capacity. you calculate the pump capacity pump capacity ah well, push i forget the the manual, the manual of Louis Marine, the, the hydraulic to select pumps. Tomorrow I bring that one. With that, with that catalog, you select the pump. Uh, this is the pump capacity. And now with the pump capacity, uh, you select what? Line. No, you select the, the capacity of the electric motor. Oh. Yeah. You remember the formula? Oh, no? okay. horsepower, yeah. You remember? Mm -hmm. You calculate. Uh, with this, you calculate the horsepower and you convert in kilowatts to calculate the motor. Yeah. What is the formula? Can, can I check the paper that I gave the last class? Uh, no. Look. With, with that formula, you calculate the horsepower. Horsepower is equal to the PSI times the gallons per minute divided by 17. Divided by 17, 14. Oh, nice. <laughs> remember that. I remember that. <laughs> and uh, with the horsepower, papis, I have the horsepower of the electric motor, and now one horsepower is, is equivalent to 746 uh, uh, watts. Uh, 13 horsepower is equivalent to that, and with that value, you have the kilowatts of the motor. Ready? And you have the, the pump, you have the motor, and uh, with this information, with this information, you calculate the volume of the reservoir. In the in the catalog, tomorrow I bring the catalog. They have the conversion for uh, 12 gallons per minute. The reservoir should be 10 by 15. Oh, okay. This is nice. But it's not that there's so 
Uh, I have the formula if you want. It, so yeah. it's like a 12 gallon yeah. tank. It's not it's, a 12 gallon no, tank. No, it's right? one, a, one a cubic uh, 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 cubic feet uh, per each two gallons per hour. Oh. Okay. It's the formula. Mm. It's, it's nice. It's simple, my friend. Can, can you imagine how impressed you the owner of a boat, the captain, if you demonstrate those calculations? If you demonstrate that that central hydraulic unit is too small, if you want to add it to more equipment. No, this is good. Let me demonstrate. Look, you need a bigger reservoir, a bigger pump. Or... Thank you. Yeah, it's completely different. You like it? It's clear the explanation, my friends? Good? Yeah. Okay, exactly the same. Pay attention. Other, other, other question. Yo, papa. Other question is, Look, the garage door, open, extend, but no retract. The actuator for the garage door, extend, but no retract. And, uh, and you check, and the electrical connections are good. Uh, the, the, the push button for up and down, the push buttons on the console are okay, the harness is okay, but uh, uh, the cylinder not retract and the pump is running and you hear that the solenoid valve move in both directions you move it with your hands and only goes up and not down what is the problem it's hydraulic the actuator is hydraulic it's air bubbles uh, it's air how you you bleed that system no let me bring that right you had it on that on the board you showed last week it's carefully <laughs> This is the, the project that we are going to do right now with the nest uh, with uh, Mr. Rodriguez. But uh, this is a typical actuator, no? This is the typical actuator. Look, one is for, and the other one for, you see? If I lose that one, what happened? The air pressure. The, the oil, oil is yeah. coming with air, and you tight again. Be careful, because if the door is extended, Oof. Didn't you, say we have to have a you need to put a, a couple of towers with a, a little lower, you drain, and the, and the door drops. Okay, okay, right now you type again, because you don't have bleeders, no, Danny? If, if you have bleeders, it's different. Right now, Danny explained the procedure if you have bleeders. Okay, right now go down, because you release pressure. Let me type again, I remove the towers, and I try again. Okay, now, okay, right now it's going down, but it's going down, pop, 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 pop. It's not, it's not continuous. Why? You have air, you need bleed completely. Let me, we finish that, that explanation and Danny explained the procedure to bleed. Bleed is the most important part, no, Danny? Yeah. Especially in hydraulics. You bleed it right, you're gonna have multiple uh, issues. I know that some garage doors will have a sensor connected inside to stop it from hitting anything. Mm -hmm. uh, how would that be connected? Ah, uh, the, the, the limiter sensors? Uh, well, yeah. the sensors to just stop it from getting anything. electronic. No, let me explain that. This is nice. Okay, here. This is a nice question. Uh, I had this problem before because I had a faulty sensor and the hydraulic actuator ruptured because of it. Because we were closing the thing and something was blocking it. It costs about five grand to repair the entire fucking thing. Yeah, here we're on. We're, we're <laughs> Excuse my language. I make this an adult class only. Not family friendly. Not family friendly. To be honest, he's the only baby. Baby, 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 baby. baby. <laughs> baby it's taking a bad temper. Oh, it's <laughs> truck people, man. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> working on a boat a couple, like a couple weeks ago that had three hatches and a crane that were all hydraulically controlled just in their in their bow deck area because they, they had two tenders well they had two bays for tenders hatches is, is it just for personnel to go through or say for uh, no it's to to oh, for, for cargo. The to cover the tenders oh i get yeah it. they're just like maybe like one crew tender and one like 
How do they Day open? Tender. How do they open and close? Are they kind of like a butterfly? With, with actuators, huge actuators. Well, one of the so one of the tenders, uh, I mean, one of the, the the hatches was let's see, it was in two pieces and it opened like that. Yeah. And then the other one was like really long, but it opened sideways like that. And putting them back in was very annoying. Hmm. I can imagine. Because like each hatch was like several hundred pounds. Yeah. I got on a boat the other day. This motherfucker had a helicopter on it. Oh, like. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Damn. Which one? Uh, it was called uh, Pablo uh, Escobar boat. boat. Huh? Pablo Escobar show? boat with helicopter. No, I don't know. It was, it was one at the boat show. Uh, I went Sunday. It's like red. It was red. And no, red this sun. was like military gray with a big flatbed behind with a helicopter. <laughs> four freaking. I was like, it looked like a military ship. I was like, who well, lands a helicopter on a boat? That must be tough. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> wow. As long as it's not moving. Well, yeah, got, the boat is most likely <laughs> always moving. It was rocking. I'm like, I guess in rough seas you won't be. Able to yeah. Those are explorer ships. Like, Those yeah, things are fucking unstoppable. Yep. And I if you got the that. money, why you not? Something like that, you yeah. got some serious Yeah, money if money. you got the money, why not? <laughs> you're not? You're not making millions, you're making billions. Uh-huh. That's crazy. And you guys went to the boat show? No. no. I couldn't. I couldn't find a ticket. I hope set up the boat show. Like last month yeah. when I went to pick up my car. Yeah, I think 35. I think 35 bucks. Oh, where's this At the gate? Oh. Oh, I went on Sunday because no, 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 no many people go Sunday. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm going to go Sunday. 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 i am going so I, ha I made one that one bolt, I made two bolts, right? One, the, the green one is going to just set aside for now. And we took the other cap and we're going to model. Mr. Lopez, what is that actuator so right there? So I'm going to do something. Double? I'm going to tell you guys what to do. do. Uh, do what's that, that uh, uh, actuator done. right there? A single double? Uh, this is, uh, uh, this is a I'm going to set, I'm gonna set up a new trend for the bolts you watch. Oh, it's a double single. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's coming. Wait, double that. It's in the works right now. Yeah, Auto's coming Friday to take video. Right? You like that explanation? Look at the picture when you have a two limit and a speed. Okay, what happened when this element it starts? The power is interrupted and what happened with the pump? Ah. What happened when the is going down down and move that one? Interrupt the pump and the pump is stopped. When the pump is stopped, what happened with the actuator? It's finished. You like it? Yeah, but this is exactly the same with the elevators. Excuse me? Is the concept also the same when it comes yeah. to contacts? Yeah. Okay. So that's momentary, normally this is closed. This mom is momentary, normally, normally closed. Closed, right? Normally closed and normally closed. Momentary. <laughs> if you check in the elevators, check in the elevators, those, those elements connected connected uh, in some elevator you have the option because it's, it's clear it's with acrylic it's yeah. transparent you can see those those terminals uh, contactors and when the when the elevator the, ele the elevator stops when the elevator goes down continue again you like it my friend uh, yeah. so you already know if you have an open circuit on one of those sensors like a lot of them, they're ultraviolet or magnetic, like on that door, it's a magnetic. It's magnetic. It, the magnetic interrupt. At least on my end, most of them have been magnetic. The majority, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, you, you can eliminate that one for other optical. Yeah, optical. Uh, if, if, the, if, the, if the mirror is in front, uh, the, the laser goes down and return, right. and is activated. But uh, if somebody pass over there, interrupt, and, and open the circuit. Finito. It's that one, the, the door. This, this one here is optical. That one is optical, and the mirror is over there. When I pass, I interrupt. Yeah? That is the same. It's the same. No? Mm -hmm. Oh, it is, uh, where you have those type of sensors? This one or this one in your boat? On the steering arm? Where? The steering arm? Maybe? No. Okay, in the steering arm, yes, yeah. uh, in some uh, actuators, but at uh, the most common, 
that interrupt and, and easily. You know, uh, uh, in the main door of the saloon, mm -hmm. when you approximate, the door oh, open. Okay, yeah. No? It's with a uh, uh, infrared. <laughs> in, 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 in that sense that he was just talking about how it's open and closed, the trim limit switch is the same thing on the on the stern drive. Correct, correct. So, train, so that way you don't over trim and damage your joints. They stop when when touch that sensor. And that's also when you run that trim, you know, it runs at two speeds. Well, it'll run. It'll run like you, once it, it gets to a certain height, then, it slower, then it's right? trailer yeah. and then it stops it from going yeah. to the trailer. And those sensors normally are located. They have holes, oval holes. Uh, you can <laughs> adjust it uh, because the people say, "I need that the garage door open a little more." Uh, you need to move the sensor a little more to allow more extension. No? Mm -hmm. You like it, my friends? You, you have more more information right now, no? Yes. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I am moving and it stopped suddenly. You go over there in the garage and somebody moving the jet skid touched, uh, hit the sensor. the sensor. And now the sensor is like this. For that reason, the actuator moved a little and stopped because the sensor is facing in other direction. Or the guy cleaning uh, move the sensor, yeah? Okay, guys? Okay, if the system is hydraulic, no sensor. Limit sensor. If the, the name is a limit a speed sensor. Limit a speed sensor. Professor, are there any other systems that do a similar function? Because, you know, let's say for a garage door or for a hatch. No, for, for is optical or is uh, uh, electrical? Those are the only no, two? No, those are the only ones. No more. No more. No more. In the boat, you have a lot of those. Like Danny said, in a small boat on the trims, the trim tabs also, the flaps, they have limit sensors. Uh, but uh, in mega yachts, a lot of the windows, the doors, no, when you approximate the door open, it's because one of those sensors is activated or deactivated, depending on. The so trim. on the trim tab, if that if that sensor gives out, what happens? You can't the trim move tab, the trim, the trim or trim tab won't have that. It won't. That's actually controlled by the operator. Uh -huh. Now they have the auto auto retract, which is just basically as soon as you turn off the key switch, it automatically sends power to trim the motor, yeah. the trim tabs all the way up. About it. But it's can you button. over, I guess, over trim it? Like if you keep Absolutely, pressing you that keep button. pressing the button, it's going to keep trimming. This is designed so once the garage is closed, yeah. it cuts power to the. Mm -hmm. You cut the power on the pump. Yeah, yeah. Remember that the pump is the heart of the system. The pump is off, no actuator, no, no fluid. Trim tabs don't have that. They don't. Just the only thing they have so is what the auto retract. Keep pressing the trim tab down. So you keep pressing it, it'll keep. Try to push it down more, even though it won't. But you could burn the motor off. Oh yeah. Okay. So so like if you, I don't know, something falls on that switch, like it's on your dash, you could blow out the whole motor. Well, you you either blow out the motor or you blow out a main fuse on that because the motor will get hot. So that's it. Doesn't thing. happen very often because those are monetary switches. This yeah. is a protective switch. Those that you talk about are only on the stern drive. The stern drive, yes, yeah, calls the limit switch. Mm -hmm. But it's only on the outboard. No outboard. No. Well, no outboards do have. A trim limit switch, uh, which uh, basically is, oh, is for the for the motors not to hit the back of the boat. Oh. And there's a limit switch that you can set on the G2s. You just hold the button for a couple seconds, and it knows to stop it every time. So like you have guys that have rod holders in the back of the boat, and they trim the motor and they hit the cowling, then you can set it up. We call it idiot proof because when you have your buddy that's been drinking and he doesn't know about the trim, he'll crush your your cover with a with a rod holder. So you're better off having the limit switch that way. He, it, it won't go up anymore. Same thing as the limit switch, but on an outboard, yes, they do have it. It's just for the trim, so it doesn't hit the cover. That's all. My friends, other valve similar to this one, uh, common in marine application, is uh, the uh, the neutral safety switch. The neutral safety switch is at the end. Is at the end of a, a servo control. The control for forward neutral and reverse. You remember in the transmission? Neutral, 
forward and reverse. This is a servo valve. It's a valve like this that uh, if you move in this position, allow that fluid. If you move in the forward position, allow that, that movement. And in the middle one, in the middle one is in this position. And at the end is located a switch. That switch, that switch is closed. Normally closed. Normally closed. Yeah? What happens if it's in the middle? Open. It's open. And what cable is interrupted? Okay. If it's started. in the middle. Yellow the red. yellow red. This is another one. Yeah? Because the transmission is a hydraulic unit. This is the next uh, the next uh, I oh, know, the next coming class for the other group. Okay, guys, good? Clear? Any other question about the, the bout roster, about the, the, the windlass? Um, it's clear for you that could be electrical or could be hydraulic, no? I just want to make a little more emphasis, like since we were talking about the trim, the limit trim, and also the outboards. So you, you, you go to trim, the motor doesn't trim up, you can may have a bad limit switch. Yeah. So that's why you have to, again, process of elimination. Is the problem in the pump or is the problem on, in the harness in the, in, the, in the boat? On the outboards, a lot of times people don't need that switch, but that switch goes bad and it'll, it won't trim up. And so what we have to do is I just cut them, splice it, and just splice them. The, or I'll take, a, I'll take a Deutsch connector that it has on an old harness, I'll cut it and splice the inside, just plug it in, and then I can trim it up. But if, if the guy's gonna hit the back of the boat, Make sure you have that limit switch set because then your damage is covered. Those covers are expensive. Uh, I want that uh, if you have the chance this afternoon or tomorrow, if you visit a boat, medium big boat, enter in the engine room and try to identify where is located the central hydraulic unit. How many servo valves are? And uh, let me check if they have labels. Oh, the bottom one is for passarella. The top one is for anchor. The, yeah verify and verify the solenoid and verify the handle because all of them they have the option to move with handle or with the solenoid okay in what case in what case i need separate the solenoid and bring external power when the push button is not working when the when when the the push button is not working yeah the remote signal is not working i bring power directly from the battery and uh, and i activate that signal if, if you don't have a uh, if you don't have a, a a battery close to the to the uh, servo valve, you can use the, the the battery of the drill. Yeah, sure. and with a couple of alligator cables, you activate. You need a small signal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so on that outboard there, can can I have? It's, it's been months since we looked at that. Can we look at that again? That hydraulic system on the outboard. That one? There? No, on the outboard. Ah, uh, that one. You know where I find? Let me get your print out there. You have switch in that one? No, I'm gonna bring a print out of the hydraulic. But uh, you are asking about that yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let, let me, uh, Danny. Yeah. Danny, I am not expert in that. Can you? Excuse me. You were saying something, Richard? No. Can you remind me about the uh, how uh, steering wheel works? Hydraulically? Okay, right, right now I, I am going to explain. I was, yeah, That's I was going to ask that too. Uh, about that. You yeah. have a steering wheel that does not have a reservoir on it? Yeah, let me how ask you. How do you bleed that? Okay, we are going to start right now. Uh, this is uh, the ram and the bleeders. And right now we are going to talk about that. Okay, uh, this is the helm, the helm pump. Mm -hmm. uh, the helm pump normally. like this one they have the reservoir the reservoir here and the rest in the bottom is the gears mm. the gears of the pump the reservoir is located here you can add it oil here ready yes what kind of gears are inside oh uh, depends the majority of them are a uh, similar to the oil pump of the engine. You remember, gear with gear? It's, gear, with gear. it's, oh. it's pretty similar. Oh, I see. They have the housing and gear with gear. Simple. Exactly the same like the oil pump in the diesel. You remember? Yeah. Gear with gear in the housing. On that one, on that one you said you turn it all the way to one side and release. Right? And bleed. Right now I am going to explain that process. Okay, pay attention. Depending on the movement, if I move in this direction, or if I move in this one, 
I send the fluid for this line or for this line. Mm -hmm. Anybody follow me? Yes. If I move like this or if I move like this. I send here or I send here. Look at this. This connection is too simple. I have the same pump here, one line connected here on the starboard side of the actuator yep. and the other line connected here. And nothing in between, nothing. Look at the connections. You see the connections? Mm -hmm. Yep. One here, other here, and right now, you see, it's working in both directions. That's too simple. But what happened with that system? Well, if it gets an air leak in it, it's not That closed. system is? Closed. Blind. You know the level of the, of the fluid? No. You know if the fluid is milky? No. You, know, you don't know nothing. Yeah? Okay, this is for a small boat. I connect the lines directly over there. But uh, it's not good. I want, I, want, I want a system that I can check the color of the oil. I can check the pressure. How much is the pressure in that system? Depend of the, of the pump, but normally it's 25 PSI. 25 PSI. The pump produced for those pumps is 25 PSI. No, I, I want, because my boat is at 35 feet, uh, I want to uh, integrate a reservoir. Because uh, I want to see the color, I want to add it more if it's leaking, I want to pressurize the system a little more, more than 25, probably 35 PSI. Uh, I want to introduce the reservoir. I want to introduce that element, the reservoir. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Look at this. Look at the reservoir that we have here. My friend. I need that you follow me. I have the same boat, but I want to introduce two elements in this hydraulic system. Two elements. One element is the reservoir. the reservoir. Because with the reservoir, I can check the level of the oil, I can check the color of the oil, and I can check the pressure. If it is over pressure, I release because this is the the valve of the bicycle, you remember? Yeah. I release air or I added air with the pump. I added air with the pump. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Lopez, can I, uh, can I see that pump right there real quick? The steering wheel pump. Oh, little buzzy. That one? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Papa. Thank you. And now you explain that. Pero te te puse el el el. Okay, my friend. Let's finish with this, and after that, Danny continue. Okay, if you check in the back, all the pumps, all the pumps, they have four, a starboard, and return. All of them, four, a starboard, and return. Okay. In this moment, this one, this one only have connected Four and a starboard, and the middle one is close. Is close in that boat. In this boat, in this boat, you have four. You have a starboard, and we are going to use that one. Why? Because we're trying. Because we are going to install the reservoir. If you don't have reservoir, the middle one, the return is close. So, if the return is close. So therefore, you, you don't have return. Go so, over there and return for the other one. Just or go it. over there and return for the other one. Just picture the reservoirs on the helm now. You don't right. have an external. Reservoir. Correct. 
So if there's, Correct. If there's no return, then that one eventually run out, you have to concentrate. No, because he come back in the other line. Oh, okay. That's what I was going to ask. Oh. Yeah. I'm like, the I'm return in the other line. Oh. I'm like, you, eventually you're going to run out of oil, but he came back in the it's, other it, line. It, uh, remember that this is a closed circuit, no? Okay. But in this one, this is the same boat, but we are going to introduce reservoir. the reservoir, and after that we are going to use PTO. The, the, the extra uh, power unit. Okay? Good? Mm -hmm. All right. The helm is this, no? We have port, starboard, and return. Okay, port is here, and starboard is here. Look at this. The reservoir, a good reservoir, they have the cylinder, the container, and they have a body of valves in the bottom. And the body of valves, they have two inputs, two outputs. This body of valves have other two for other unit, if you want it. Okay, here, here, and this one is the return. You follow me? Yes. Okay. All right, pay attention. I interrupt port, I interrupt starboard, and I continue with port, and I continue with the starboard. Port enter here, and starboard enter here. Suppose that you don't have that one. Suppose that in this moment you don't have that one. This one goes here, and that one goes here, directly. Ready? Does it matter which one you put on like, for example, if you take... No, the idea is that they have the letters. Got it. okay, that's port, what I said. Port, starboard, Got it. and port, starboard, gotcha. and you have port, starboard. Okay. Finito? So if you have a secondary helm station hooked up to that, the additional ports, yeah, correct. and you're, let's say you're up on the flybridge and you're turning it, does yeah. the steering wheel And now I am going to explain... No, also? the steering wheel on the bottom won't move. No. No? No. But then you'll need the middle hole, uh, like he just showed you in this helm, for the upper station. And the upper station has an air vent on the cap. Correct. On top. Okay. So the only um, one that has the vent is on the top, on the top part of the station. So let me let, let, let me we finish with that, okay. and after that we explain that one because this is a little a little confused. Okay, guys, ready? Is clear? Yeah. Can I, can I, I interrupt port and starboard. I cut yeah. it, and I continue port and starboard. Good. On this body of valves, would it control both starboards at the same time and both ports at the same time? Correct. Okay. Correct. Sorry for interrupting. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh. In, this, in this element, I need an extra T. Let me explain why. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh, I am going to explain later when I explain the installation of this. Normally, for starboard, for starboard continue over there, and the return goes from here into the return on the pump. That return enter here in the return of the pump. Ready? So you'll have two return, one go in the reservoir and then another one goes to the pump. No, pay attention. Okay. This is the pump and this is the return. Right. You have a line that is connected here with this. Okay, so this. what about that? Uh, okay. And now because I am going to install that unit, I need a T to connect that one here. Ready? In this moment, it's because I don't have the T. Uh, I put only that one here, but you need a T to connect this one here and the other one here with the pump. Everybody follow me? Yeah. Everybody follow me? So you have one from the PTO going to the reservoir, another one go to the pump. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Because have? because I don't have the, the T, I install only that one. Gotcha. But uh, you need a T located here, and you go over there, here, and the other one go here. Everybody follow me? Look at that for me. So, so oh, forget that. Yeah. Forget that unit. Uh -huh. If you don't have that unit, I disconnect this one yeah. and I bring that one no, directly. That, that I get. But with that power assist unit that you have there, you still need the return. The return. And you need a T. The return enter here and yeah. continue here. So then that that yeah, hydraulic fluid. Source. Excuse it, me. It's the hydraulic fluid that's going to be returned to the helm. It could come from either side. Pay attention. Why you need the return line when you added reservoir and when you added a power, uh, power assisted unit? The pressure? Because you have extra pressure. Yeah. You have extra pressure and not all the fluid return through the other line, like this. You have extra fluid. That extra fluid return through the middle one. That's correct? For that reason, you added the third one. Uh, it's because you added extra pressure. Look, 
that element added other 35 PSI. Oh, okay. So that's okay. You have 20, 30 here, <laughs> plus other 30, you have 60 in total, 60, 65. Ah, for that reason is that, that when you have that one, uh, what happened when you move the wheel? Is super easy. Wow, it's super Smooth. soft. What happened if that unit is off? <laughs> it's, it's good, but it's not too soft. All right? It's normal, like this. This is with no hydraulic unit, but it, uh, no power assisted. If I added the power assisted unit, you can move it with one finger in both directions. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. But I'm still with the return that's going back to the helm. So on the power assisted unit, it says 65 PSI. And normally the unpower assisted, non assisted is it's, 25. It's 35. So yeah, 20. in that circuit where you have that T, if there's additional pressure of 65 PSI coming from that, is that not going to then flow through the T back into the reservoir? That's Why would what we it flow? want. Correct. Yeah. Back in the reservoir in this area. Oh, Great okay. question. Let me explain what is the meaning of that. If you check the manual of this element, they say that the level of the fluid should be in the middle of the second window. The level of the fluid should be in the in the in the middle of the second window. And what is the meaning of that? So you can pressure. You have that area of Super air. pressure. Air. That area with air. What is the enemy of the hydraulic system? Air. Air. Mr. Lopez, but this is ridiculous. You have that amount of air, and the enemy is the air. Yes, my friend, pay attention. Each time that I move the wheel in both directions, the oil circulates here and returns here. When the oil pass here, the air goes up. It stays up. Yeah, and it stays here, the air, not in the fluid. Right. For that reason, when you install an element, a new actuator, what is the recommendation number one? Please. Move the wheel in both directions 20 times. Bam, bam, bam. What is the idea? Bring past the fluid with bubbles here and the bubble goes up. Uh -huh. Everybody follow me? Yeah. This is the idea. For that reason, all the manufacturers say, oh, I feel that it's hard. Okay, move it. Move it in both directions. R, three times, 20 times. Ah, bam, bam, bam. Oh, right now it's better. Okay, because the air right now is located here. So when you're pressurizing that with the bicycle When pump, you pressurize, you're you, using you connect 65 the pump here, pounds there. and you added more pressure yeah. in this, in this, in this uh, uh, chamber. But would you put in 65 pounds if it's power no, system, no, no. 25 no. it's not? No, normally that one is around 35, 35, 40. Pay attention. What is the meaning of that? When this element works, that one goes until 60 and oh, returns. okay. All right. Goes until 60 and returns. But normally is. 35. Uh -huh. gotcha. Good? Okay, so that, that's clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see, you see, oh, oh, lock the needle and return because somebody activate the a power assisted unit. Oh, okay. It's only for that moment. It's an on demand pump. Uh -huh. okay. It's an on demand pump. So that, that pump can handle 65, right? That, that pump, reservoir, that reservoir. pump added 30. The reservoir. Oh, handle. the reservoir uh, can handle, handle for that reason they have 70, 80. Oh, okay. Yeah? That's the capacity. But normally, in normal condition, the boat is off, you open the hatch, how much is the pressure here? 25. 25, 30. Ah, what happened if the pressure here is 15? It's no good. Low. What happened? Leak. What happened? Very hard to see. You have, you have, a you leak. have a leak. You need to identify where is the leak. Oh, I have a leak here. For that reason, I added pressure with the pump, and in 20 minutes, it's 15. You need to solve it, that problem. Yeah, you have a leak, right? For that reason, look, <laughs> I put that one to identify where is the leak. Yeah, right. I have a leak in this moment here, <laughs> in that one. Hmm. You, you like it? Yeah. And the pressure on top, again, is for, no, like the, the air on top in the second chamber, it's a lot, it's for like the fluid to move. It, that, that, that chamber of air mm -hmm. is used to pressurize the system, to keep the system oh. pressurized. So right. the fluid, the, the yeah. fluid the you, you, you know? Okay. Can you over pressurize that? No, no, no. The recommendation is keep the, the needle in 2530 always. Because when the pump is activated, go to 60 and return. Go to 60 and return. You like it, my friends? And it doesn't matter how many engines you If you have two, four, it's all the same. Oh, oh, it's the same. It's the same. Pay attention. 
How this pump works? How this pump works? Switch. Each time that you move the wheel a little in one direction, internally, internally, they sense where enter the pressure and activate the pump in this direction or the other direction and produce extra power here or extra power here. Check. You understand? So is that, that element internally have a sensors. When you move a little on this one here, they sense that the extra pressure should be here and start to move in this direction. What? If you move like this, start to move in the other one. What kind of sensor is it? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a diaphragm sensor. It's a, diaph it's a membrane that uh, when they sense a little pressure here, immediately activate a clockwise rotation. Oh. If, uh, if the pressure is here in the membrane, activate the corner clock. This is a simple device located here. If you open that one, you can release the pressure on the membranes. Uh, the, the, re the recommendation is never touch <laughs> those, uh, those valves. It's clear, my friends? Questions about that situation? Is it, if you're the engine, like let's say it's a, it's a big inboard, uh, no, no, no. Is it going to use uh, more this one, this one is for boats uh, until 65 feet. Okay. That power assisted unit. Uh, what if you have two engines? OK. Uh, uh, you, you can install two. two you have to install two of those? Pay attention. Two Pay attention. Depend of the boat. Suppose that I have a boat with two rudders, two engines, but uh, two rudders are connected with the link and only one cylinder. In that case, I only need one, right. one pump. Oh, I have two rudders in the pan. Ah, you need two. But normally, normally, both rudders work together with a link and only one actuator. That's correct? That's correct? Yeah. Exactly with outboard. Exactly the same. With the outboard, you have two outboard with the link. Okay. Yeah? So the bleed on the engine. Okay, right now we are going to explain the process to bleed. That's the next okay. step. Until this point, clear, my friend, or not? Yes, sir. Okay, what is the most difficult part when you install a hydraulic system? Make sure you, everything is tight. So for the oh, correct. It's a, the, the, the number one is verify the boat. Where, how is the boat? And, uh, and verify, um, verify where I am going to locate that unit, where I am going to locate the reservoir, where I am going to interrupt the lines, and verify if I have the fittings. The fittings for this actuator, the fittings for this unit, and the fittings for this. Probably you pass two days buying the, the, the fittings, because the fittings of these are different like those and different like this. You need a lot of fittings and adapters. So it doesn't, the system don't come with, with the line? Ah, okay. Of if everything is the same manufacturer, probably the fittings right. are universal. But the hoses, you have to get those custom made, the length, Correct. Right? And you have to go to a shop where yeah, you have the right correct, tool to make correct, it. So correct. you have to be really careful. Correct, correct, that. correct, correct. The link that Danny bring, I, I am going to... There's not an issue with those hydraulic lines on the thing.